the MediTutor pl uh, platform is also a telehealth platform. Well, that means it, it, it has some features that allow us uh, to use it for synchronous and asynchronous telehealth. Synchronous means that I have the video and the audio connection with the client at the same time. Um, so I'm actually doing a um, live session, if you like, setting up the practice, looking how he's doing the practice, um, giving uh, feedback, uh, and having this live audio and video going at the same time. Asynchronous telehealth means that I can go, um, if the patient sends me an email and says they have a problem with, my, with their exercises, I can go with my dashboard and I can change these exercises. I can check to see what he's been doing, what, what, um, uh, how he's been um, proceeding with the tasks. And then I can give him feedback by email or by text on, on changes that have to be made. And I can actually implement those changes into the software, into his homework. So we have legislation that allows us for, to build for both synchronous and asynchronous telehealth. Uh, we have been billing for um, several years, private insurance from our clinic in Seattle. We've been billing for telehealth sessions. But uh, during the COVID-19 situation, uh, Medicare have uh, also um, allowed for billing. Um, so the billing is very much uh, more easy done now uh, than before the COVID-19 situation. Now, we have usernames and passwords and a hierarchy of user access, as I detailed to you above. So the patient can be given a username and password. And how that's done is by going in to the patient, um, as you're selecting the patient, and I'll show you this now. Okay, I have two examples um, of, pay of dashboards on my screen. The first example is a um, user, a home-based patient, which I've titled VA Demo. Okay, now I came in as his username and password. And this is the dashboard that he's going to see. The dashboard that he's going to see is uh, a basic um, uh, calendar, which he can click on his calendar, and he can see instantly previous tasks that have been set before uh, in the task list. So once we've saved tasks to the task list, these then become the tasks that are populated in the previous task list. And what this means is that the patient can quickly go into each and any one of the tasks, okay? He will have a device at home, which he then has to uh, connect. All right, so I've got one here for you. I'm gonna just connect, 382. Turning it, turning it on and connecting. And once it's connected, he can proceed with the task. Now this is gonna be the exact task that was set up for him before in the previous task list. So let's just go back to the patient dashboard again. So again, this is the patient dashboard. He has a calendar. He can click on any place, well, on the current day of the calendar, and he will get a list of previous tasks. If he has had homework set for him, he can click on, if it's particularly on this day, he can click on that, and he will get a list of homework. And we'll show you that in a minute. At the same time, me or the therapist at home will be seeing a different dashboard. So this is now the therapist dashboard. Here I am, Alan Waterman, and I see that my patient VA demo is online. 
So it allows me to ring within the system or to bring up VA demo and to make a call within the system to VA demo. Here now is VA demo who can answer the call. What happens when it answers the call and we have not got a Zoom meeting in progress is that we will populate a video. So his video and my video will be seen on the left hand side and the same with the therapist dashboard as well. Now, as soon as the therapist now presses treatment, he is controlling the dashboard of the patient who's at home. Now, the dashboard, the patient cannot click on any of the icons in the dashboard. He cannot move around. He cannot uh, navigate through his software because his software is being remotely controlled by the therapist at home. So again, the hat of the therapist is clicking on a task, is moving and saying we're going to wear it on the wrist. It's on the left wrist. And the patient is seeing exactly the same at home. So it could be on the left wrist for extension flexion. Concomitantly, the therapist at home is seeing exactly the same. So this is how you do a synchronous telehealth session. Okay. Now, um, we're now going to take the hat of the therapist. So this is the therapist, sorry. This is the, th the therapist online, which you can see here. If you like, we can play the game. One sec, when well, it's just loading on the patient side here. So this is actually, I'm representing the, the patient at home, but I'm actually seeing the performance through the, the dashboard of the therapist. So I can play the game. And once I've gone over 40 seconds of playing the game, and I'm just showing you that that is happening exactly the same with the, with the uh, patient at home. So it's synchronous again. After 40 seconds, I'm going to stop the task. And I'm going to save it. So if now I go back to the patient dashboard. I will see that today there has already been a task which has been set, which has been played, okay? Um, so that's well documented already. Now we have a look here, we can see what the risk range of motion is. 81 degrees, we can see how long we played the game for and we can start to annotate, okay? Um, during uh, uh, pronated position. And apply. So now we have our notes for each one of the patient tasks because this is a synchronous telehealth session. So we're going back to the treatment and this is actually the dashboard that the, the client was seeing. So all that time, one second, while I was 
on the patient dashboard, in my therapist screen, the patient still saw his game being played or his task. So I can work asynchronously um, or if I can work on writing my notes while he's doing his tasks, but I'm going to still have the audio and video element to see what's going on. So I'm now playing him or setting the task in motion. So there's the, the dashboard of the patient. The task has been set in motion. And as I said, I can navigate to the patient dashboard. There he is still playing the game. And here I am navigating through the patient dashboard. What I can set up now is I can set up a homework task. So let's just see what I did for that. I have an icon in the top right hand corner called recurrent tasks. I can click on recurrent tasks and once I've saved my task in my task list, these now become options for me to give as homework. So for instance, this task, cup and elbow flex. First of all, I can set the date. I want the homework to be done from today's set date all the way to um, next Wednesday. So I see him, let's assume that we see uh, the client once a week on a Thursday. So I can set the homework period of time till the Wednesday evening. So that's from today's date, the 2nd of July to the 8th of July. And I can set him homework. There we go. It set track a target, cup and elbow flex with the fingers. That was from my task list. I can take something further down from my task list. Um, active supination from neutral and I can save that. Once I save that I now populate his homework schedule on the agenda and I can see how it's been populated. From this point I can take into each individual days and I can further customize the homework. I'm going to say, you know, I don't want you to work on the Tuesday because you've told me that you're going to be uh, in, a, in, a, in the clinic. You're coming to see me in the clinic. So I've taken out, sorry, the Friday's homework. Or I can say, you know, you've got more time on the Saturday. I want you to work on fingers. So the Saturday's tasks are, have been extended. So you've also got fingers, wrist, and forearm. Whereas on a weekday, you only had uh, fingers and forearm. So I can individually customize, further customize each day's protocol. Now I can be working on this all the time while the patient is still working. If I want to go back to see what he's been doing, remember I've got audio and video in this connection, so it's still synchronous. And all the time, <clears throat> I can see the treatment working here. If I, by just clicking on the dashboard. Once I've finished, um, we can stop this session. Again, this has now been added to the patient dashboard. That was the second task which I've just stopped. Okay, so that has been added to the task settings.
when I stop the communication with the client or stop the audio video, the client goes back to his dashboard. Now his dashboard gives him several options. It actually shows him the agenda that we've just set up. For instance, if he clicks on, he can only click on the day that we are actually working, okay? So if he clicks on today's date, he can now instantly go into one of the tasks. Okay, so let's go back. Continue. Um, he can go back to my dashboard. He can click to see what he's got on offer for him today, what homework he has to do on offer. He can say, I want to start first with the arithmetic game, which is active supination from neutral. Obviously, supination is going to be using the 3DT sensor. So if he then decides to play this game, the here's the active supination sorry from neutral so here's the supination from neutral so here's the supination from neutral sorry so here's the supination from neutral okay set up next It loads his task and he can then play this task and he can supinate from neutral. Okay. Again, when he's playing this task, the timer is working. And we're gonna actually play it for two reasons for 40 seconds. Actually, the task de de default setting that I set for him was 10 minutes, but we could have changed that in the settings of the task list. Let's say that's enough. He's stopped playing now. He stops it, he closes it. And Again, if I go on to my client when I'm not online, If I go on to my client when I'm not online, I can see that he started to do his homework, that he's done 4% of his homework already, okay? And I can also see that there is a line produced in the task list. So on the 2nd of July, he did active supination from neutral. And you can see here that that was 4% of his homework. So this is starting to give him, if he looks at his dashboard now, he can also see how much progress he's done. So this is an um, example of badges. This is an example of gaming motivation that is done to motivate the client to complete his homework practice. As well as motivating the client to, to achieve his homework practice, it also allows me in an asynchronous fashion to see how much homework he's been doing, to see exactly what task he's been doing. So again, if he has a problem and he sends me a um, email and says I had a problem with this task, I can go into my side of the software and I can see what he was doing and I see whether he actually was completing the task or maybe he was doing something else. So again, that allows me to do what we call an e-visit which allows me to work through emails and text to help the client do their home exercise practice.
Okay. In addition, the client also may not actually choose from the home exercise practice, but choose from the previous task list that is done. So they can choose as well any previous task that is done. And in exactly the same way, this was a task that was set up to do leg uh, extension flexion. So that was the task that was set up. So they can play that leg extension flexion. Okay. So you imagine me now flexing my knee. So this is put on my knee. You can imagine me flexing my knee. Okay, and we're going to play this now for forty seconds. After we played it for forty seconds, we're going to stop it. Now, if I go back to my dashboard. What will it will actually populate Let's see when it populates. It might take a little bit of time for the database to populate. So I'm going to just refresh my screen. Ah. So the exercise that I just paid actually was a squat. And you can see here that the annotation for my side of things is that I did self-practice. So when I took the task list that was set as homework, it's called home practice. When I te take it from the task list, it's called self-practice. So I'll be able to see whether the client was actually doing self-practice using different tasks, so it gives me a point of conversation with them, or whether they were doing home practice. If they were doing self-practice, then they don't appear to get any more percentage of uh, their homework done. Okay, so that completes the training. Thank you. Okay, Abby.